Uh, Ash is an indus industry liaison officer with the New South Wales DPI sheep and goat traceability team focused on sharing information across New South Wales on the role of electronic identification for sheep and farmed goats. She has a background in farm biosecurity, emergency livestock diseases and completed her undergraduate postgraduate studies in the livestock sector. Ash is based east of Goulburn where she has a small breeding flock of Dorpers. Welcome up. Uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, thanks for the intro. And um, yes, Jody, thanks this morning for um, covering my presentation for me. Um, so I'll, I'll just be back later for the uh, questions. All right, so just, um, I guess, a really quick introduction of the sheep and goat industry in New South Wales. So our um, national sheep flock size is over 70 million, um, roughly at the moment, and um, over about one and a half million goats a year are processed. And New South Wales is the biggest producer of both of those. Uh, so for us, it, it's... Um, it's a big change, it's a big investment, and it's of very high importance um, to help our sheep and goat industries through this change. Uh, so why is Australia moving to adopt um, EID? It was a national decision, so all states other than Victoria are all doing this together at the same time. Victoria did um, jump on the bandwagon a bit early, they've been uh, rolling with EID in sheep and goats since 2017. Uh, and the, the national decision, so the reason why uh, all our, our um, governments have come together and decided to do this now really comes down to biosecurity and market access. So with the um, ever-growing ease of international travel, um, international imports, and also with the, um, the big threat of particularly foot and mouth disease, but also lumpy skin disease and, and others that um, have come very close to our borders. Uh, EID is a very valuable tool and is another one in our tool belt to help us for biosecurity incidences, as it does enable us to trace where animals have been throughout their whole life much faster and much more accurately than the current Mombay system. And this all links back into market access where um, by having very good traceability and knowing the lifetime uh, movements of animals, it enables us to access markets that we might not have um, already have access to. And if a response to um, a food safety or a disease were to happen, EID enables us to trace and to respond to that a lot quicker, which then in turn enables us to return back to market faster. So EID is being supported nationally in, in different ways, but for New South Wales, uh, we've got um, some contributions from federal government. So over 40 million has been put towards upgrading the Analyze database and co-funding states for implementation. In New South Wales, this has equated to just over $30 million of support has been put towards implementation of EID. And a lot of this has gone towards rebates that are available for producers, for sale yards and processors, and also for livestock agents. And then we're also in the process of producing a whole bunch of um, training and resources, as well as um, the likes of myself that work in, in sort of the extension space that we're traveling around the state um, helping provide this information. So for livestock owners, what are you supposed to do? At the most simple, um, the sheep and goat industries are just catching up to the cattle industry. So just the same as cattle are now, they, um, they must have their, their button tags, their NLIS ID tags before they leave their property of birth or any other subsequent property. For sheep and goats, it's just gonna be the same. Instead of putting in your visual tag, you'll pop in an electronic tag, or if you prefer to use management tags, visual management tags as well, you can have both. 
Um, and then when those animals are moved, they just need to have an, an electronic tag and those individual numbers for those, those tags are uploaded to the NLIS database for any movements. So just the same as the cattle industry. So the tag changes, not the rules. So again, instead of that visual tag, you'll have an electronic tag, but the same rules apply. You're still required to have a pick. Um, you still need to use NVDs for any movements, and any movements are also reported to the NLIS database. And the only change there is that it's an individual upload instead of a mob. Uh, so in, um, I guess, in a quick description of what an EID is, um, I've got on the table at the back there an example of all the accredited tags that are currently available. But basically, um, instead of having just a pic printed on the tag, which is what the visual tags are now, it will have what's called an NLIS ID, which is a combination of your pic number as well as some other codes and um, serial number there, which is on the screen. So. Um, one of those which is important to note is the device type code. So that specifies what animal the tag is destined for. So um, if you have sheep, you need to order sheep tags. If you put a goat tag in a sheep, um, then when that animal goes to the sale yard or something, it, it won't be accepted because it's got the wrong tag. Um, and so that's the visual number. And then when you scan the tag for the microchip, the microchip number is what's called an RFID number, which is represented on the bottom of the screen, which is um, code there. And both of those numbers are unique for every individual animal, just like a microchip in a dog is. So for um, livestock owners, what you need to do is all sheep and goats born from next year onwards will need to have an electronic tag before they leave their property of birth. And um, then all movements of sheep and goats that have electronic tags will then need to be recorded individually in the NLIS database from then onwards. And then this, the second phase of, of this um, is from the 1st of January 27, where all sheep and goats, regardless of how old they are, will need to have an electronic tag before they leave any property. Uh, which also means that mob-based analyzed movements and visual analyzed tags will no longer be available. Uh, so for, for other industry members, they'll also be participating in this process. So from the 30th of June this year, all New South Wales processors will start scanning electronic tags um, for any that are available and uploading those to the database. And then from the 1st of January next year, all sale yards, goat depots, and agents will also be required to scan the individual tags and upload those uh, movements to the analyzed database. Uh, so how electronic tags are used are just a few sort of key points here. One electronic tag per animal. Um, basically, it's just gonna confuse your readers if you've got more than one tag on an animal and it's just unnecessary. Um, if the animals have any existing visual NLIS accredited tags, they can stay on. Um, and if they require an electronic tag, just add that to the animal. It is an offense to remove any NLIS accredited tags. So this is both visual and electronic. Um, the only time, the only exception to that uh, so for any missing or any non-functioning electronic tags, um, so the non-functioning ones can be removed and replaced. Uh, and if it's missing, then obviously it needs to be replaced as well. Um, as I mentioned before, electronic tags are species specific, and that is coded into the tag when you order it. So um, cattle tags for cattle, sheep tags for sheep, no species crossing with the tags there. Um, and unlike in cattle, sheep and goat electronic tags can be attached to either ear. So if you prefer to put um, males in one side, females in the other side, that can continue on. Um, so how can EIDs be used to, for production benefits? I'm not sure I really have much to add to that after Trady's presentation this morning. Um, 
but just as a couple of really brief examples. Uh, so for someone that has a very strong wool focus in their production enterprise, you might look to record sort of one or two traits to begin with, to keep it simple, um, learn the technology and get started. And you might decide that fleece weight and micron are two very important factors to your business that fit in with your business plan and your breeding objectives. Um, if you record those from your um, your U flock or your rams, uh, then you can have a look at that data once you've got it all, and that information right there gives you that evidence base, that database decision making that you just can't get without individual animal recording, and you can easily find your um, your individual animals that have your heaviest fleeces and your finest microns, um, and those that are at the bottom end of the scale, you can then flag for those ones that are going to be your culls. Similarly, if, um, if meat production is your focus, you might be more interested in growth rates, um, and you might also be more interested in twins versus singles. So there has been a bit of research done by MLA um, on this, and a very, um, if my memory serves correctly, so preferentially selecting your replacement stock from twins um, provides a good return on investment and culling um, twice empty use also returns something like $6 uh, per dollar invested into EID. And then add your growth rates in. You can pick your, your fastest growing use again for your replacement breeders. Um, your slowest growing ones you might want to put into one of your better paddocks to help pick them up. Again, management decisions all based on evidence data on the individual animal basis. Uh, and again, you can then use that information to pick out your culls and your best for breeding. Uh, so a question that we do get asked a lot is, do I need a, the um, technology and associated equipment that goes with electronic tags? And the answer to that is maybe. Um, so it, that's you know your stick readers, your panel readers, and as the picture on the screen can be a handler with, with inbuilt readers and inbuilt functionality. So if you want to dive down the individual animal performance recording, then yes, probably um, the technology is going to be very useful for you to do that. Uh, and if you do purchase large numbers of animals from other producers, so that includes through um, platforms like Auctions Plus, then again, yes, you will probably need one because as the receiver of the animals, it's your responsibility to complete the NLIS transfer. And so you will need to scan those tags to upload to the database. Um, but there are a lot of instances where you probably don't need to buy any EID associated technologies. So any purchases made from sale yards, the sale yards will do NLIS transfers for you. Um, easy done there. And if you only purchase small numbers of animals, so if you would only buy a couple of rams a year, uh, you can just manually read that NLIS ID number and use that for your database upload. So it's, um, it really is uh, business dependent on if you do or don't need um, any of the associated equipment for EID. Um, coming towards the end, so the producer rebate, uh, and as, as I mentioned at the start of the presentation, there's a QR code on the screen that just takes you to the website where the rebate application is um, for, for more information. So the producer rebate covers up to half the costs of eligible items. So that includes your handheld readers, your panel readers. Um, and that's for any purchases made from December 2022, which is when uh, the EID program was announced, and this is paid on a first-in, first-paid basis. Um, and that's similar for livestock agents. So the rebate for livestock agents is also still available, and it's also to cover half the costs of, of EID technologies. Um, and so this is it for me. So uh, the QR code takes you to our website, which has an absolute abundance of information about EID, uh, and we're producing um, a few case studies at the moment to show how EID has been used on farm and some of the benefits of it and how um, 
you know, the challenges as well that, that farmers have faced when adopting it. Uh, and that's our, our team or my team's email address. Uh, we're more than happy to answer any questions or to attend events like this or um, other on-farm events, small events, big events, everything in between. Uh, just happy to help and get the information out there. So um, I've got a table up the back with some brochures and some information. So if anyone doesn't want to ask a question in the um, QA panel, you're more than welcome to come up and have a chat. Thank you. Thanks, Ash. Uh, and yes, Ash will be back after um, the break in our Q&A panel then.